morning. Are you glad to be in church this morning? You feel like you're in an episode of Gunsmoke with a piano player tearing it up over here? Yeah, my name's Frank Whitney, and I'm glad to be here this morning with you. This young man with me is Clarence DeVore. He's from Collinsville, Illinois, and I don't know where he learned to play the piano exactly, but I sure am glad he did, aren't you? So we've started our senior adult revival, so all you young people, this is going to look different. You might say, wow, this seems kind of odd. And it is kind of odd because this is the way we used to do church years ago. And when you're old like me, you know how to do that. I was a pastor for 47 years, and so that makes it easy to know how to do that. So uh, enjoy it. Realize it's going to be something different for you. But listen to me. Above all, remember this. It's the same God, the same Lord, the same creator, the same sustainer of life, the same grace that pours down through the ages. Amen? Amen. Clarence is going to play for us the, the, the Baptist National Anthem. You know what that is? Dave, you know what that is. Tell them. Man, I was so counting on Dave knowing. It's called Victory in Jesus. It was written by Gene Bartlett, E.M. Bartlett, out of the great state of Oklahoma. So Clarence, you play for us. And then we're, we're ready for you. Just want to welcome you one more time. Welcome to First Baptist Church. If you are a guest this morning, hey guys, I'm going to tell you, Brother Frank, the balcony is sometimes a wave to you. So Okay, there All you right. go. Good. You can throw money, holler amen, any of those things. Let her rip, take her chip. If you throw oh, money, good. throw it hard enough where it gets over these and just comes <laughs> towards him. So we don't want to hit anybody below. Uh, if you are a guest with us, we'd love to have a record of your visit. Uh, you, there's a yellow guest card in front of you. If you would take just a moment, fill that out, hang on to it. And uh, you can put it in one of these black boxes, or you can give it to myself or Brother Frank or whoever you see after the end of the service, and we would love to have a record of your visit. As you can see, this is going to be a special time after the service today. We will have a carry-in dinner down in our gymnasium. And as, as I'm sure you will be reminded over the next or uh, several times here over the next hour or so, we have tonight, we have a gospel group that will be here at 6 o'clock. And the, title, the name of that group is Final Authority, so if you would make plans to be back for that. And then 6.30 over Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights, we will be back for the revival. Uh, one quick thing, too, I want to share with our congregation that uh, we have been praying for our schools. This week we started giving uh, thank you notes and invitations to church to our middle school here in town. And so as I open us up in prayer, uh, we will be praying for them as well. Let's go ahead and, and go to the Lord in prayer. God, thank you for a wonderful morning, a wonderful service as we gather together as your people to worship you. And I pray that you will bless the time that your spirit will fill this place and fill our hearts and guide us and direct us in the ways that you would have us go. Give us a freedom of worship, God, this morning. Help us to set aside anything that might be burdening our hearts and so that we can, we can, with all of our hearts, seek you out. God, I pray for our middle school, particular this morning, God, the staff and the children. We pray for salvation for each of those who've not given their hearts to you. And God, we pray that you will bless them, give the teachers wisdom. God, we pray for each home, that you'll bless the homes of the teachers and of the children, God. And, and Lord, I just pray, God, that as a church, we will be faithful in praying for them and that we will seek to be a light 
in our community. God, you are so faithful and loving, and we're so thankful for you, God. And, and we pray that, that in all that we do today, as we seek to bring honor and glory to you, uh, that you will, that that will that will be what we do, and that and that you will work in a special way, and so that when we leave here, uh, we will leave here closer to you and better servants for your kingdom in Christ's name, Amen. We do have an Annie Armstrong video too. We're going to watch this morning. They see him here. They see him here. And they see him here. We know it because he said it. Jesus said. The world will see him when the world sees us. That's why together we do this. We give so that those who've not yet seen can see. They see him here. They see him here. And they see him here. We know it because he said it. Jesus said, the world will see him when the world sees us. That's why together we do this. We give so that those who've not yet seen can see. It means something when the world sees how we give. It means something because we do not look the same. It means something because we do not sound the same. It means something because when we give, this is what the world sees. They see the gospel doing what the world cannot. They see the gospel making us one. And so we give. We give so that missionaries can go. We give so that churches can be started, hurts can be healed, and truth can be shared. We give so the world might see Jesus in us. United, United as one. All right, those of you that are familiar with Annie Armstrong know that through our Southern Baptist Cooperative Program, it is one of just two offerings where there are no administrative fees. Every dollar that you give to Annie Armstrong during the Annie Armstrong Drive, every penny of that makes it to the mission field. None of it is used in administrative fees. And so we want to encourage you to be a contributor to Annie Armstrong and know that every penny, every nickel, every dime, every dollar makes it to those missionaries for their service and their use. I'm glad to be here today. I, I want to tell you, I'm one of your executive board members for the Missouri Baptist Convention. So I'm serving on the executive board for the Missouri Baptist Convention, and we send greetings to you from them. We appreciate your support as a church to us and are thankful that uh, you're participating with us. It's a joy to be with you today. Now, some of you may wave at me and say, man, he didn't seem very friendly when I waved at him. It's because I can see the third row. After that, you all get fuzzy. Now, I can see Dave back there and Lisa just because they're very familiar to me. And I think up here in the corner is Brian Hoofendeck. Is that right? Hi, Brian. How are you? So I can see you a little bit, but uh, some of you don't think. Just come up to me and say, hey, Brother Frank, do you remember me? And I won't lie to you. I'll, I'll say yes to you and whether I know you're not, Okay. <laughs> Hey, it's a joy to be with you. It's good to be back in Montauk County. I served for McGurk for five years when Heather was a little girl. And yes, boys, she was Henri. She was Henri. And I was her pastor, and uh, it's a joy for me to get to serve with her. I met Jeremy just recently, and uh, am very pleased to meet him. And I uh, think you've done, done a great job there. Looking forward to serving with him. So... We're glad to be here today. Uh, I think they're going to have Blessed Assurance on the screens. It's hymn number 334. If you want to go back old school, why well, that'll be fine with me. We're going to sing all three verses of Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine.
You're not, you're not smiling enough for me. See that? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to look to the person to your left, and here's what I want you to say to them. I love what you've done with your hair. Now, turn to the person to the right, and here's what I want you to say. My, don't you look slimmer today. All right, now you keep those smiles on your face. We're in church today. My favorite picture of Jesus is called the laughing Jesus. You go home, look it up on the internet. Jesus' hair is thrown back and he's laughing. And I think God intended us to be a people of joy. Amen? And the way we show our joy is through our smiles, through our friendliness, through our warmth. I want to have a good time this week. I want to worship God. We're going to lift Jesus up. And he says, where I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. You know what that Greek word all means? All. <laughs> if we lift him up, he'll draw them. We don't have to draw them. God will draw them. And such is added to the church, such as should be saved. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Perfect submission. Second verse. Here we go. Perfect submission. Perfect delight. Vision of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending, look from above. Angels of mercy. Come on, church. This is my soul. saved from now unto eternity. Jesus said to the woman at the well, drink of this water and you will never thirst again. That sounds like a long time, doesn't it? Never, ever thirst again. Okay, kids, all you kids, I don't care where you are, up in the balcony, uh, this is the one time you can run. Just don't tell mom and dad. I said, okay, come down here and get on the platform. Sit down right here. Hurry, hurry, hurry. I got something special I want to show you. Hurry, hurry, you got to hurry. Come on. I mean, you got to come like a monkey getting on Noah's Ark. You're the third one and it's starting to rain. <laughs> you got to hurry. All right, come on, get up here close. I'm not going to bite. I spit a little, but I don't bite, okay? That's the bad news. I spit a little. What, what's your name? Levi. Levi, you look like a preacher. <laughs> Are you going to be a preacher one day? Yeah, you might ought to think about it, right? Might as well. Hey, do you know we're going to talk about God all week? And if you come, I promise you, I'll use words you can understand all through the sermon. And uh, you'll get something out of it. But did you know that everything you can name was made by God? And he made it out of nothing. 
Bible says he spoke into existence most everything. Name something that you think is really cool. Yes. A kitten. God made it, the first kitten, out of nothing. Yes. Yourself. People. God made us. He says in his image, we look a little bit like God. I don't know if that means two eyes, two ears, and a nose. You have to ask your pastor. He knows all of those answers. <laughs> he can answer those no problem for you. Yeah, he made us, didn't he? What else did he make? Yes, sir. Excellent. You got a dollar bill. Bring that up here to the evangelist. Let him pray over that. That's perfect. Thank you, my man. Now, hey, 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 here. Here's what I want you to do with this. Did you give this to me? Yeah, okay. I want you to put that in the offering plate, okay? Will you do that? And we'll give it to God and say thank you for all the things you did. Hey, do you know that God is still alive and well? You don't have to do it right now. You can do it in a minute. You can sit down if you want to. Do you know God made everything that we see and even the things we don't see? For example, how many of you have ever seen an amoeba? Yeah. That's what I said when I was in school. A what? Yeah, there's things we don't see like germs and bugs and things out in the, in the universe, uh, in the galaxies that we don't see. So this morning I thought it would be really cool because we only have a few minutes. If I showed you something God made that no one has ever seen before and no one will ever see it again, would you like that? Remember, something that God made that no one has ever seen before and no one will ever see again. Now, now stay with me here. Watch this. How many of you parents would like to see that also? Hold your hands up. Yeah, some of them are not telling the truth. They would, they would like to see that. Okay, here it is. Here, I'm going to show it to you. What is that? Yeah, it, my generation called these goobers, Right? Goobers, goobers. That's what we called them, goobers. Peanuts in the shells were called goobers. Now, look, you know who made this peanut? God did. And you know what? No one has ever seen what's inside of here, okay? And I bought these at the store, and these are apparently not fresh peanuts. <laughs> Sorry about the mess up here, Mr. Janitor. All right, everybody, come here. I'm going to show you what no man has ever seen before. Look at there. See those? See that? Isn't that cool? God put those peanuts in that shell, and no one has ever seen them before. And no one will ever see them again. <laughs> hey, you know what? While we're gathered up right here, let's do this. <clears throat> let's pray and thank God for making us just like we are and allowing us to be here today. Would someone like to pray that prayer for us? Would you pray it for us? Mm -hmm. Okay, you do that. God, thank you for everyone who came here today. Um, thank you for every um, kid and grown-up. Thank you for moms and dads. Thank you for everything you make, God. Amen. Amen. Now, every night you come to Revival, we'll have a time just like this that we'll do something just for you, okay? And the deal is, the rest of the service, you got to listen, okay? Will you listen? All right, good enough. Let's go. We'll find out. All right. Don't you love children? Jesus told his disciples, suffer unto me, the little children, and let them come to me for no one enters in the kingdom of God except as the faith of a small child. You know, uh, I used to love big church. You remember big church, high church, when we sang, you know, A mighty fortress is our God. And you could hear that pipe organ. You remember? Say, uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Well, we're going to sing one like that. It's hymn number 161. Crown him with many crowns. We're going to sing three verses, first, second, and third. Clarence, if he knows, it's going to play it. Here we go. Crown him with many crowns.
sin? Amen. 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 Isn't it good to be in God's house today to worship together, to praise Him, to thank Him, and to worship Him? Now, I, I do all kinds of worship. I do all kinds of, uh, I don't lead all kinds of worship, but I'm in all kinds of worship. And here's the secret for me. I don't care whether it's contemporary music. I don't even care if it's Christian rap. One of my favorite Christian artists is a guy by the name of Damak. And uh, he's, a, he's a rapper. Now, Clarence does rap, but I don't do any rap. So it, we might get him to do some rap a little bit later. But what matters to me is do I see on the hearts and the lives of God's people them worshiping together? When we worship together... I don't care if it's in a nursing home, in a Bible study that I'm teaching. I don't care if it's in some youth event. I don't care if it's a children's uh, camp. I don't care where it is. When Jesus is being glorified and God's people are singing his praises, then we understand what David meant when he wrote the words, May my praise be a sweet smell in the nostrils of God. May it be pleasing to him and in his sight. I hope that this week it is pleasing in your sight as to what God will do for you and what he's going to do this week. Would you like to hear Clarence play something else? Uh, do you have something else in your record? I mean, not roll out the barrel or any of those that you do. Would we like for me to ask them? <coughs> That's what I thought. God bless you, Clarence. That's Clarence DeVore. He used to be a bank president. Did you ever know a bank president that talented in your life? Somehow God cursed him to travel around with an old retired preacher and to make the old preacher look good. That's what he's doing. And I, it is a joy for me to have him. 
Well, we're going to talk about what it takes for revival here in just a few minutes. We're going to look at 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. You know that verse. It's the recipe for revival. Uh, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, I will send revival. Now, there's some more parts in there. We're going to talk about those parts in just a minute. But here's the assurance that we have today and every day that we are redeemed in him. That I'm as saved, you're as saved today as you are ever going to be if you are saved today. And heaven, we don't have to wait to die to go to heaven. We live in the Spirit today. Spirit of God dwells, fills us up, lives within us. When I die, I'm just going to go through a door. That's all I'm going to change from here to there. But I'm just as saved today as I'm going to be when I die. And you are too today. Amen? That's worth rejoicing over. We're going to sing When We All Get to Heaven, 514. And uh, what did I decide? We're going to do all these? Four verses, I think, is what I decided. You help me. Be happy about it. Don't be Methodist. Be Baptist. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy. Percival, lead us in a word of prayer, please, sir. Father, we love you. Uh, I just want to thank you so much for this opportunity this morning. We can all be together to sing your praises, Lord. I just want to pray for Brother Frank as he brings your word. God, speak through him. May we all experience revival this morning. God, may we take it into this week. And uh, God, just change us through your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. I want to share with you, I've had back surgery and have nerve damage in my lower back and in my legs. So it's taken me 45 years to understand in order to preach like Jesus, you have to do it sitting down. Jesus, the Bible says, and he sat down and taught them. And so that's what I do these days. I sit down and teach them. We're not done yet. <clears throat> I mean, I'm not done. You're not done either. 
So my favorite gospel song, oh yes, children, if you're going to children's church, you can go. That's right, I was told to tell you you could go. That'll be perfect. We'd love to have you back with your offerings, if you would, later. <laughs> That's not true. We'd love to have you back. Hey, my favorite gospel song in all the world, How Great Thou Art, Victory in Jesus, uh, The King is Coming, uh, any of them. My favorite gospel song, him or otherwise, is a Dottie Rambo tune. You don't know if you know Dottie Rambo or not. And it's to an old Irish tune called Danny Boy. And the reason that I love this song so much is because it's my testimony. It's who I am. It's what God did for me. It's very, very meaningful to me. You have to listen to the words. Now, I don't sing any songs, hymn or otherwise, for the, the music. I sing them for the words. So all of the words are always important to me of every song that I choose. And I want you to know that. This song, there are no words in all of gospel music that touch my heart each and every time I sing it like this song. He looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. If you've never heard it, you're in for a treat. It's a great, great gospel song. <clears throat> shall always be my song of praise for it was grace that bought my liberty I do why he came to love me so he looked beyond my faults and saw my need I shall for
thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you did. You know, thank you so much. You know, Solomon, when he was commissioned and felt by God that it was time for him to build the temple, he, uh, he wanted to build something special for the house of God. You know, these, these houses that we worship in, we call them churches. But we really know as Baptists, because we've been trained through the years, that the church is really us. Amen? But aren't we blessed with beautiful buildings? You have a beautiful building here, lots of heritage in it, lots of history. And uh, this is the place that we call set aside for holy worship. You know, set apart. That's what the word holy means, set apart for godly service. Now, you can have a barn dance in here if you move these pews out of here, right? But one of the sweet little deacon's wives is going to come up and literally tear the hide off you if you do. <laughs> because, you see, that's not, what it was, that's not what it's designed for. That's not what we use it for. That's not what we call it. We call this the sanctuary, the place that we come. Now, once again, it's just wood and mortar and paint and all of those kind of things. But what makes it special is that we have set it apart for godly service. Do you all normally have a communion table up here? Not normally, but you have one? When you have communion, do you use that? Yeah. So that table would work good for a fried chicken dinner with biscuits and gravy, wouldn't it? But once again, wait a minute, preacher. I, that's not what that's for. That's not what that's for. Now listen to me. Church, today we are saved for a purpose to be set aside for something specific, for godly service. Can you say amen? If you want my best, you got to talk to me. <laughs> yeah, we're set aside. That means every single one of us. That means every child that opens his heart, no matter what age, no matter when, and says, God, I want you to come into my heart, forgive me of my sin, Lord, I want you to take up residence. I die to myself, and Lord, I'm going to raise to walk in newness of life. That newness of life is I'm no longer walking as Frank, but I'm walking as Saint Frank. Oh, my, you say, oh, that's arrogant. Uh-uh, because -uh. except for the blood of Jesus, I cannot walk in him that's what gives me that nature. Church, we have sponged the obligation of what our job, our part of being a Christian is all about. God's got some parts, and we expect him to do it. Like, how many of us, when we ask him to forgive us, expected him to forgive us of our sins? Sure. And we also expect that when he forgives us of our sins, that, hey, when I die, I'm going to heaven. Right? Well, guess what? The walk of life in a Christian walk is a covenant relationship. He's got some things he does. We got some things we do. If we expect him to do his part, then we should expect to do our part. Yeah. Now, not always can we do that. Not always can I do that in my life. Sometimes I'm disobedient, and that's when God has to take me to the woodshed. Right? Right? And I've been to the woodshed a time or two. I know you would never dream that, but I have. I have been disobedient in my life. But you see, God called us and saved us, set us apart for a specific service, something that God wants us to do for his glory, for his honor. And he says, hey, Frank, if I call you, I will equip you. I'll give you the tools. I'll give you the things that you ought to do in your life, but you have to be willing to walk what I call you to do. And when I gave my heart to Jesus as a seven-year-old boy, I said to him, Lord, I want you to forgive me of my sins. I didn't have any teeth right here in my front. My sister had knocked them out with a broom handle. She was mean, <laughs> mean old gal. And I was burr-headed, lived in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. My dad worked for the Atomic Energy Commission. And I was saved as a seven-year-old boy in my pastor's study on my pastor's lap. 
because I had been in bed and was crying after a revival service. My mother said to me, what's wrong with you? She loaded me up in a 55 Ford Fairlane and took me down to church. I ran down the side of the pew, pews into the pastor's office, and there my pastor sat, and I crawled up on his lap. And he said, Frankie, what are you doing here today? And I said, that man who preached, he said, if I never invited Jesus into my heart and asked forgiveness of my sins, that I couldn't go to heaven that I would be eternally separated from God. And I said, Brother Kenneth, I want to go to heaven. And as the best I knew how, as a seven-year-old boy, I confessed all the drug abuse, wife-beating, dog-kicking, lousy sins I had done in my life. But you know the important part? Here's the important part. I said to Jesus, if you'll come in and forgive me and live in my heart, I will live for you to the best of my ability for the rest of my life. Well, here I am, 167. (laughs) And I'm still trying to do my very best to live up to the promise that that seven-year-old boy made in that pastor's office that day. Why? Why? Well, back then, I wanted to escape hell. I didn't want to go to hell. That's, he scared me. I don't want to go to hell. I want to be with Jesus. That's why I came to know him. But listen, that's not why I serve him today. You see, God has grown me in that fellowship as I have walked with him hand in hand, and I have grown close to know him. And some people say, Brother Frank, how in the world did you do that? And I said, well, I married Shelly. Shelly, wave at everybody over there. If you're married to her, you'll come to Jesus quick. (laughs) No, I'm blessed. I have a wonderful wife. She's been beside my side for many years. Don't know what I'd do without her. She says that one of these days I'm just going to come up missing and she's going to tell God he died. (laughs) And I'm not sure that I'd blame her. But you know, what caused me to grow in him is walking with him every day. Solomon said, Lord, I want to build this house where you will come and you will hear the people's prayers and you will honor them. Isn't that what we want from our churches today? This week, we want people to come and pray and sing and praise God and feel his presence engulf this place and our lives. No matter what else happens, no matter if somebody gets saved or we have 400 join or whatever he decides to do, If God will bless us with his presence, where we feel his presence, we know his presence, and we can have communion with him, that's a good day. That's a good day in the life of any Christian. Here's what Solomon said. I want you to listen to. I'm going to read for you a little bit out of chapter 6. Now, if you can remember 2 Chronicles 7, 14, remember 2 Chronicles 6, 14. Because here's what it said. Solomon said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God in heaven nor on earth like you. You keep your covenant and mercy with your servants who walk before you with all their hearts. You have kept what you promised your servant David, my father. You have both spoken with your mouth and fulfilled it with your hand as it is this day. Therefore, remember, every time you see a therefore in scripture, you say to yourself, what is the therefore, therefore? Okay? That says, therefore, because of those things, those things he just said, therefore, Lord God of Israel, now keep what you promised your servant David, my father, saying, you shall not fail to have a man sit before me on the throne of Israel, only if your sons take heed to their way, that they walk in my law as you have walked before. And now, O Lord God of Israel, let your word come true, which you have spoken to your servant David, but will God indeed dwell with men on earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you, how much less this temple which I have built. David says this temple won't hold you, but God, we still want you to come and visit this place. Do you know when David prayed to fill his cup, he didn't tell you what size cup he had? You remember? The 23rd Psalm, my cup runneth over. He doesn't tell you what size cup that is. 
So if you bring a teacup, he's going to fill it to run it over. If you bring a coffee mug, he's going to fill it over. If you bring a, a 44 ounce belly wash cup, he's going to fill that to overflowing. If you bring a 55 gallon barrel to God, he will fill it to overflowing. You know why? Because he is from everlasting to everlasting. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. He is all things to everything, the Creator, and without him was not one thing made. Amen. And today, our worship to him, he is worthy of all the praise we have to give. So Solomon said, Lord, I built this great temple, but it means nothing if you don't show up. Now, church, I'm going to tell you something. I don't know California, Missouri very well, First Baptist Church anymore, but I can tell you a little bit about your ha uh, past. I've known many of your pastors, all the way back to Ron Baker. Anybody here when Ron Baker was here? Yeah, I know Ron Baker. I knew John Campbell very well. John Campbell, I was his pastor for many years. I know Greg Morrow, and uh, what a great pastor he was. This church has had some wonderful days, amen? And I believe the greater days are ahead of us if we will bring about revival within our churches. Well, what does revival mean? Well, it means calling back to life that which was once alive that has grown dead. If you ever been around a campfire, it's a raging campfire. You go to bed that night, and the next morning you have just a few embers. And somebody has to get some fuel. Wood, leaves, sticks, hay, trash, whatever. And they get down on their knees, and they stack that on there, and they blow on that and guess what those embers that you thought man those are nearly out all of a sudden they ignite they glow when the holy spirit walks into our house into our church into our lives and he goes all of a sudden we hear some old gospel piano player playing some of those old hymns we hear some little fat preacher start singing about those great hymns, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit begins to ignite it. You see, it's not about the style of worship. It's not about what translation of the Bible you use. It's not about the clothes you wear. It's about yielding our hearts and lives to God and say, oh, God, fill us. We want your presence. Solomon said, Lord, I built this beautiful temple. I made all of this sacrifice to you. But God, if you don't inhabit it, it means absolutely nothing. First Baptist Church, let me tell you something. The only way you're relevant is if the Holy Spirit abides in your hearts and lives. Amen? I'm not sure you're convinced, but you will be before the week's out, I promise I'm telling you, God wants to inhabit his people. He wants to hear our praise. So in Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, here is the recipe. Solomon comes to God and says, Oh God, will you hear me? Will you hear what I have asked? And in verse 12, the Lord appeared to Solomon by night. I hope that never happens to me. He'll scare me to death. And said to him, I have heard your prayer. There's point number one. You want revival? You got to ask for revival. If you're not asking for it, don't worry. It won't come. You won't have it. If you want revival in your life, you have to ask, God, send revival to me. <clears throat> I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. He told Solomon, you've done it. I agree. That seven-year-old boy, Frankie Whitney, when he was a little boy, he gave God that, that temple, that burr haircut, no teeth, and he said, God, here it is. Now, I pray, prayed the prayer of Jabez. I probably weighed about 45, 50 pounds back then. I pray, prayed the prayer of Jabez, which says, Lord, increase my borders, and look at me now. <laughs> God has blessed us. He increased our borders. 
and he will increase our borders as churches if we will but call him in. It's not a plan, Brother Frank. Do you have a plan or a formula? I do, but it's not to knock out the windows or put in more pews or change the carpet or do a different worship style. It's about whatever you do, do to bring honor and glory to God that his spirit may find it a sweet smell in his nostril and say, I'm going to inhabit this place. I'm going to inhabit this life. If we live our lives apart from God, we can't expect God to move in, can we? We have to. Well, here's, here's what he says. He says, so when I shut up heaven and there is no rain, notice he doesn't say if. When turmoil comes, when calamity comes, when cancer comes, when sickness comes, when death comes, when old age comes, when I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people. He said, when those things happen, if my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Second Chronicles 7, 14 is how you have revival. It's the recipe, it's the sure thing for revival. It's as sure as any recipe, ladies, that you have cooked up in your kitchen. When you do this, this, and this, this happens. God says, if my people, that's us, will call upon his name, turn from our sin, look to him for guidance. You might say, Brother Frank, I'm not even sure what my sin is. That's okay. Just turn to God and say, God, show me, and he'll show you. He'll be more than happy to show you. When I was a young man, a teenager striving to find out how I was to live daily, I, I read that verse where Paul says, die daily, and I thought, man, how do I do that? It doesn't mean you get saved every night. It means you get what the Pentecostals, can I steal a little word? I'm really a Baptocostal if you haven't figured that out. There's a little word they use. It's called prayed up. You familiar with that? That means as far as I know, my heart is clear before God. I've confessed everything. I've asked forgiveness of everything. God, I want to be right in your sight. We got to get prayed up, church. We got to want a desire to get in the very, if I fall down, somebody help me, get right in the center of his will. But you know what I've discovered in most Baptist churches over the 47 years I've pastored? Many aren't interested in being the center. They want to know, where's the edge? Brother Frank, when I tithe, do I have to tithe on my cows? Brother Frank, do I have to tithe on my stock market increase? How close, how close can I get my toes to the edge? When we really ought to be saying, God, where's the center of your will? God, what's the most that I could do for you? You see, Solomon said, God, we built this great temple, and unless you come and abide here, it won't amount to anything. But, oh, God, if you show up, what happens, Lord, if you show up? Things begin to happen when God's spirit moves. Solomon's heart had to rejoice when God said, I've heard your prayer, and I'm going to abide in this place. I'm going to abide here. And he said, Solomon, when trouble comes, when pestilence comes, if my people will humble themselves, seek my face. What does that mean? Seek God's desire in my life. Teenagers, listen to us. Many times we're ready to live for God when it's convenient we're around our buddies that go to church. But what happens when we get away from our buddies who go to church and we're with the buddies who don't want to go to church? All of a sudden we sell out. We become ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Or gentlemen, when we go to work and all of a sudden our wife goes from being our sweet baby to being our old lady. Yeah, my old lady's at home. I'm going to tell you something, I ain't got no old lady. <laughs> She'll argue, but she's not. 
Man, I got a sweetheart. That's what I got. I got the very crown. You see, it's about how we look at and see what God has blessed me with. Now, I walk with a cane, and I, I get around. I look, I look pretty old. As a matter of fact, when you see me out of the pulpit, you'll say, oh, my, I'm not sure he needs to go in there. <laughs> Hopefully, when I'm in here, you say, I hope he never comes out. <laughs> but let me tell you something. There was a day when I could put my hand on top of a T-post and hop over a five-strand barbed wire fence. No problem. Put my hand on the side of a pickup, jump up in there. Why, if I did that today, I'd tear down a half a mile of fence. <laughs> right? I can't do those. There's things I can't do today. But you know what? There are things I can also. There's some things that I can keep doing. Because you see, the Spirit of God inhabits the heart of those who surrender their heart to Him. Church, let me make it quick for us because we're moving to invitation time. If you're unwilling to surrender your heart to God, you can't expect God to move in. If you're unwilling to surrender your home to God, you can't expect God to move in. If you're unwilling to surrender your church to God, you cannot expect God to move in. For you see, without Him, we're just a bunch of fancy hay barns. But with Him, we become the sanctuary where God meets his people. And I've preached in everything from a dairy barn to big, fabulous churches. And I'm going to tell you, when the Spirit of God moves, it doesn't matter one whit what building I'm in, whether I'm a Methodist, whether I'm a Baptist, whether I'm a Church of Christ, no matter what I am, when God moves among his people, we know him. We say, that's my shepherd. I'm going to follow him. This week, senior adults, listen, this week, we're going to have revival. may not be the way the kids want it. may not be the way the young people want it. Listen, we don't care. We don't care. We're going to come and meet God right here. The way that we did. The way that was comfortable. It might not be for somebody else, but that's okay. God's got a plan for them. He'll send Heather to them, and she'll do her thing. And they'll be blessed. And we, listen, we got to make sure we're not at the back going, Oh, that Heather and her music, what in the world is she thinking? Brother, listen. Remember the words of Gamaliel, if God be with her, who can be against her? You better be careful who you fight against in the Spirit of God. I don't care what it looks like. Just lift up the name of Jesus. For you see, Romans 1.16 says, It, the Word of God, it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. He don't care what kind of can or carton it comes in. Just turn him loose and let the Holy Spirit do what he wants to do. Now listen, you may be here this morning and you may say, Brother Frank, rewind a little bit. Back to that story of when you were a boy. I'm not sure I've ever asked forgiveness of my sin and invited Jesus into my heart. Listen, I want you to know you can do that this morning. Just a minute, we're going to have Brother Jeremy stand here, and we're going to have an altar call, and you can come. Take him by the hand. Take me by the hand. You can talk to us later. You can do whatever you want to do. But if the Holy Spirit is drawing you to come and give your life to him, don't you delay it today. You come and do that. He, he may be leading you to just come and kneel in this altar. Maybe you don't do that at First Baptist Church. I don't know. But you got a great altar here. You may just want to come and kneel here and say, God, I just want to feel your presence. I want to be close to you today. Maybe you need somebody to pray with you. And so you go across the aisle and you grab a friend and say, come on, with, will you go pray with me? Pray with me. Just open our lives up and say, God, you have your will, your way, in your time, 
in my life. For you see, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their sin, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Today, every single one of us needs forgiveness. Every single one of us. And this morning, and every morning, and every time you pray, the offer of forgiveness was given on the cross of Calvary. This is not my invitation. This is not this church's invitation. This invitation was given by Jesus when he cried to his father and he said, Father, lay not this sin to their charge. Forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Oh, I'm grateful today I can come in ignorance. Otherwise, I'd have never made it. But I got to come as a seven-year-old boy just crying out to God. Whatever God lays on your heart today, I don't care what it is. You come. You feel free to move. You don't have to talk to anybody. You don't even have to move. You can stay right where you are. But oh, what a blessing it is for the rest of us to see God working among God's people. You come if you want to. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation after I pray. We're going to have a word of prayer, and I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit will move in your life and my life right now. And that as he leads us, we'll respond to him. And as we does, during that song, you come if there's a decision you'd like to make. Heavenly Father, we love you. Oh Lord, how we love you. We thank you for loving us. God, we thank you for loving us so much that you wanted to make provision for us, that you wanted to provide for us an avenue whereby we could be redeemed. Lord, thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for the plan of salvation. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the faith that you instill in us to be able to yield to your grace. Now, Father, give us the willingness to say yes to you. Give us the willingness in this moment, in this invitation, to close out all of the other things round about us and to follow you. Lord, speak to us this morning. For now, we are listening. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Will you stand with me? We're going to sing hymn number 320. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, you come. Oh, so are you weary and troubled.
seated. In just a moment, Brother Joe's going to come and give us a few announcements. Y'all thankful for this morning? Amen for Brother Frank? Amen. Yes. Just want to remind you again, tonight we'll have final authority here and Brother Frank will be back uh, Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night at 6.30. So if you would, not only make plans to be back, but make plans to bring somebody with you uh, for the special time. Uh, Brother Joe's going to, when he comes up, he's going to also pray for our uh, meal. And uh, if we would, as we dismiss here in a few moments, give some of our older members a minute to be able to get out and get in line first, and then all of us can fall in behind. Brother Joe? All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Uh, just to let you know, uh, if you're a member here, we remember got our monthly calendar. It has our things in there for stuff. Uh, after service, uh, you can go here. There's the elevator right there. If you're not familiar with our church, or you can go uh, all the way through and down to the other elevator if you uh, are okay with uh, steps. Um, there will be Wednesday activities uh, in the after school program. If you're also interested in uh, doing 3MT, that uh, date for uh, doing that is going to be the 14th. Uh, also on April 15th, we have the 3MT taco dinner uh, and live auction. Final authority tonight. Uh, thank you guys for being here. When we pray, um, I think we're going to come into the main entrance. Everything's kind of set up right there. So uh, that's where you can go to. Let's pray. God, we thank you that uh, we're able to be here. God, we thank you that uh, just like you, the fellowship doesn't quit because uh, we quit singing. God, I pray that if there's one here, just like we talked in Children's Church, what do I need to do personally to be ready for revival? And then if I hear of somebody else dealing with something or struggling or needing something, God, help us to be an agent of helping that change. God, reveal to us how we can help a friend how we can help somebody struggling with sin, how we can help somebody. But, Lord, let us set ourselves right first. God, I thank you for the kids and what we got to do talk about today. And, God, prepare our hearts for revival. We don't want modified, uh, we don't want just modified behavior. We want a change that comes from Christ. God, pray that you'll take this food and nourish from our bodies, that uh, we'll be able to enjoy our fellowship and our time together. God, we thank you. We continue to bless the services and the times we're together. Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. So if you're some of our older people, if you want to head that way, we can. For, for tonight, can I leave this here? 